Hey everybody, this is Kathy from Kadel Handmade and I just wanted to welcome you to my video tutorial today for the Sander Sling from Kite Co Creates. And before we get started, I just want to send a special thank you over to Jill over at um, Kite Co Creates and um, just say thank you so much for letting us use your pattern for today's sewing marathon. Um, it's a super cute pattern and I can't wait to see all of the Sander Slings or Sander Crossbodies that come out of today's tutorial. Um, so let me show you the one that I am making today. This is the Sander Sling, the small size, and I'm making it as a sling option. There is, like I said, there is a crossbody option in the pattern as well. So you have that option if you would rather have a crossbody style versus a sling. So for mine, this yellow here is the dry oil skin. I think it's called dry oil skin from um, Merchant and Mills. And so it does have that little bit of um, like a, a worn look, almost like how um, waxed canvas will get that kind of that the crinkly lines and, and stuff when you use it. Um, this one has that as well, although not quite as much. So I think it just gives it a neat little like worn in texture. So that is the yellow again from Merchant and Mills. This um, waterproof canvas in the palm trees that is from Amber over at So Majestic. And it's super cute. I love it. It's really vibrant in person. So it goes perfectly with this yellow. And then I'm using just orange webbing um, for the back here. And then again, if you saw that, the option when you have this um, on the back, that's so that depending on if you want to wear your sling this way or if you wanted to wear it this way, either way works because the strap will just slide to whatever side you need it to slide to. And then on the front, there is a slip pocket and inside we have a, a card, credit card slot on this side and a slip pocket on this side. And those are optional if you wanted to add those. You don't have to, or you could just add one or none. So yeah, this is the Sander Sling. Let's go ahead and um, let's get started. Okay, so we are making the Sander Sling today. Today I'm going to be making the sling version. Um, there, it comes with, the pattern comes with two options, a sling or a crossbody. And I'm going to make the small size of the sling version. So let's go ahead and go over the pieces that I'm going to be using and then we'll get started. Okay, so you're going to need two of your body lining pieces. That is pattern piece E. You will also need two body pieces, pattern piece A. You will need one slip pocket, piece F2, one credit card pocket, piece F1. Then you have a bar tab. Since I'm doing the sling version, there is only one of these. If you're doing the crossbody, I believe you need two for that. Pattern PC is the front pocket. So you have an exterior and a lining. For the sling tab, you have two of these. And I'm using the same fabric for that. That's pattern piece D. Pattern piece C2 is the pocket flap. If you wanted to add a pocket flap to it, um, I'm still on the fence for that. So I may add it, I may not. We'll see when we get there. <laughs> and then pattern piece B is the top. You'll need two of those, and I have already interfaced according to what's provided in the pattern. You will also need a zipper with a zipper pull. Hardware that you'll need is a lobster clasp. The pattern calls for three quarters inch, but I am going to be using one inch today for my, for my hardware. So a D-ring, a slider adjuster bar, and a lobster clasp. You'll need all of those. And then, of course, you'll need a length of strap. I am using this orange seatbelt webbing for my strap. And then optionally, you will need rivets if you wanted to add rivets. It's not required, but it is recommended. Double-sided tape, clips, and I think we're ready to get going. Okay, so the first piece we're going to be working on is that front pocket, which is pattern piece C. If you are adding a logo tag, it is suggested that you add that now. So I'm going to go ahead and add my logo tag. So you're going to add it centered to the front of your exterior 
front pocket piece. And that's pattern piece C. So I'm just removing the paper backings here using double-sided tape. And then I'm going to center it. Let's see. I think right there is about center, so I will measure in from each side. And yep, that looks perfect. Okay, so I'll stitch this on. Um, and then the next step, what we're going to do after you stitch your logo on, if you're not adding a logo, you're going to take your lining pocket and your exterior pocket, place them right sides together, and then we're going to stitch all the way around, starting at the bottom, up around the pocket, down to the other side, but you're going to leave the center on the bottom here unsewn because that's where we're going to turn the pocket through. Okay, once you have the flap, or the front pocket, I should say, once you have that stitched, you can just trim up your strings. And then you wanna make sure that you have that turning hole in the bottom. And then at the top, you might be able to see it a little bit easier on this side. At the top, your stitch lines go straight off. So you have that little opening there. And I have a string over here. Well, you can see it over here too. It just goes straight up. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to trim the corners. And I'm going to trim them here at the top too, just to help make that turning out a little bit easier. Okay, then the last thing you want to do is right into the corner, you want to snip straight in as close as you can get to that stitch line without cutting your stitches. And if you accidentally cut your stitches, just go ahead and you can just stitch over them again to secure that. Okay, once you get all your corners trimmed, the little snips here, at the top curve of the pocket, we're gonna turn it through. Okay, once you have it turned through, you wanna fold that bottom open edge in. Get my little strings out here. I'm just going to add a clip or two across the bottom just to hold that closed. And that's, that was where your turning hole was. Okay, you can take it over to the iron if you want to give it a little press. Just to make sure it's laying nice and flat. And then we are going to top stitch along this top curved edge on the inside only. So right along here, around, and then back up. Okay, now that that is top stitched along this top curved edge, what you wanna do is grab one of your main body A pieces with your pocket. You're going to lay it centered, lining up the top of your pocket with the top of pattern piece A. And let me just see where I'm at here. Let's move it over a little bit. You could always fold it in half and fold it you know, fold each piece in half and then line up that fold mark. Um, but I am going to do it with a ruler. Okay, so once that is lined up, I'm just gonna clip it in place here at the top. And then what we want to do is we want to stitch straight down across the bottom, making sure to close if we have, this is where our turning hole is. If we have any fabric sticking out, you wanna make sure it's nice and folded in. We're going to stitch across the bottom, the side bottom, and then up the other side, attaching the pocket to the main pattern piece A. Okay, pocket is all sewn on. So now what we want to do, we're going to grab one of our top pieces. This is pattern piece B. We're going to lay it right sides down. And as you can see, I already have it interfaced. So we're just going to lay it right sides down, aligning that top edge. We're going to stitch across according to the seam allowance. Then we're going to flip this panel up and away, keeping the seam allowance facing up. And then we're going to top stitch right on that fold line. 
Okay, so top or stitch here, flip it up, top stitch across. Okay, once that is top stitched with the seam allowance pressing up towards the top of the bag, then this front pocket is done. I decided to not do the flap. If I was going to do the flap, I would have attached that before I attach this top, this top piece. So I'm gonna leave that off on this bag and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, next we're going to be working on the back. So the first thing we need to do is create the D-ring tab. So for that, what I did was I just put a piece of um, SF-101 and it didn't go all the way to the edge and that's fine, I'm not worried about that. That's just to give it a little bit of extra strength. Um, the pattern provides instructions for making this tab um, a three quarters of an inch wide. I'm gonna do it a little differently because I'm using one inch hardware. So all I'm going to do, this piece of Decoville light right here in the center measures one inch. So I'm just gonna fold the side in and then fold it in one more time. And I'm gonna add a couple clips here to meet that or to hold that. And then again on the other side, I'm just gonna fold this edge in right to the edge of the Decoville. And then again, I'm gonna fold it in. And it doesn't meet the center and that is okay because this is going to be enclosed with our hardware. We're going to be sewing it right sides together or I'm sorry, wrong sides together. And so this is going to be hidden on the inside. So it doesn't it doesn't bother me in the least that this doesn't meet in the middle. If it bothers you and you don't like it, then by all means adjust your measurements so that you don't see this in the middle. But to me, this is just fine. Okay, so I'm going to now top stitch along each long edge. Okay, so here's my strap. I decided to add, a two, to add <laughs> two rows of stitching. And as you can see on the back, it just secures it nicely there. And it also looks kind of neat on the outside, I think, as well. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to measure six inches. We're just going to cut that off. We're going to set that to the side and use that later. Now for this one, there is a measurement provided in the pattern for how far in you want to fold each short edge. Okay, and you're going to, before you fold that in, you're going to attach your D-ring. You're going to slide that onto the center of your strip. Okay. All right, and then you're going to fold in the short sides according to what is provided in the pattern there. I'm just going to clip these in place. Okay guys, so as I'm working on this, I have made an executive decision. <laughs> so this is going to go on here. You will stitch a box. If you're using this strip, you're going to stitch a box on each side to attach it. Optionally, you can also add some extra Decoville on the back before you stitch it on just to give it some extra strength. Um, but what I think I wanna do is instead of using this strap, so if you're making this, if you made the strap and you want to use it, that's what you would do. I decided that I am going to instead use a piece of um, strap webbing. And that way it's going to coordinate with my strap. So it's just another way to bring that color and that coordination into the bag. So I'm going to do the same steps just singeing the end lightly here, just to make sure it doesn't fray. And same thing, adding the D-ring. You're gonna fold it under according to the seam allowance or with the measurement that's provided in the pattern. You're going to do that on both sides. 
and then there is a measurement provided in the pattern. Again, the same, you can stitch a box on, which I'm going to do, and then I'm also going to add a rivet to each side. Okay, so to help me to hold that in place a little bit better is I am going to put some double-sided tape on the back side of that strap. And the same on this side. Just a little bit of double-sided tape. And that will hopefully help me to hold it in place until I get over to the sewing machine and I can stitch it on. Okay. So. Okay, if you have long clips that will reach, um, this might be a good time. Let's see if these ones will reach. They might maybe <laughs> just barely reach. Um, so I'm now I'm gonna take it over to the sewing machine. I'm gonna sew a little box here, and then I'm going to attach a rivet on each end there. Okay, there is that stitched on, and then I added two rivets on either side, and then you have the D-ring that will be able to slide either way so that whichever way you wear your sling the strap will be on the right side okay so to create the other half of our um, strap attachment you will take either the other piece that you cut off or i just cut a length of strap webbing and i'm going to slide it over my rectangle ring um, i didn't i don't believe i mentioned this in the beginning but you do need a rectangle ring I did not have one, so what I did was I took, I had an adjustable rectangle ring and with the slider bar in the middle, and then I just took pliers and just pried that off, and then I had my rectangle ring. So if you happen to find that you're ever in a spot where you don't have the stuff you need, sometimes you can still make it work. All right, so to make the adjustment or to um, create this other half that is where our strap is going to attach, you're going to take the sling tab D and for your exterior piece, you're going to lay it centered right over that and you want it overhanging by about a half of an inch. And I'm just going to clip that in place. And then I'm gonna take it over to the sewing machine and base stitch right along this top edge. Okay, once that is basted on right across the top, I'm going to grab my other sling tab piece and I'm going to clip it on so they are right sides together. And then what we want to do now is take it over to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch across the or up the side all the way across the top and then back down to the other side. Um, so stitching all the sides except this long bottom one, we're going to leave this open because that's where we're going to turn it through. Okay, once that is stitched all the way on or all the way together, again, bottom is left open. What we are going to do now is we are going to just, I'm going to make some little cuts in here and that's just going to help to make, when we turn it through, it's going to help it to lay nice and flat. So cutting a little corner out of that side and then the same over here, right where that corner is. I just wanna cut a little triangle out. Okay, and then again here at the top where these turns are, we are going to cut in to that corner and then turn and cut up. Okay, so again, we're going to cut in to that corner and turn and cut up. Okay, so that's how it should look, and that's just going to make it lay nicer when we turn it through. So now, there we go, and as you can see, it's already laying pretty nice. 
without even having to poke out the corners. Okay, there we go. Now that we have that, what you wanna do is you wanna take it to the machine and then just top stitch again along these edges, leaving the bottom edge open. All right, top stitched, looking great. Now what we wanna to do to finish the back piece is we want to grab our back with the strap on it, finding the center again. Just gonna make a little finger fold and then finding the center of our strap connector that we just made. I'm gonna line those up and I'm going to lay them down right sides together. So it is, I'm using the same material, so it might be a little tricky, but just remember that the fabric that is this side is the exterior. No, this side is the exterior, this side is the lining, see? <laughs> I'm just gonna flip it over. And again, it doesn't matter for me, but um, the piece that I have the Decoville on is I'm calling the exterior. So that's the piece that I want facing up. So again, your lining or your outer piece A is right side up with your strap and then your strap tab is right sides up. Okay, now you want to go ahead and base that in place straight across. And then what the next step is, is you're going to take your other top piece B, you're going to lay that down, stitch it across according to the seam allowance, and then this time we're gonna flip everything up to top stitch. So I will base this on, I will sew this on, and I'll come back and show you what I mean for our top stitching. Okay, so that is basted on. Now what we wanna do, I know with the front, we just folded this up and then stitched here, but we don't wanna do this because we need this to stay up. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna take everything and flip it up, your lining, your seam allowance is now facing down towards the center of the bag. And then we're going to top stitch along this edge here. And that's gonna help the top of our strap, our sling connector to stay in the right direction. Okay, top stitched. Now your um, back outer piece is done. We can set this to the side and move on to the lining. All right, so the first step is to decide if you want to do a slip pocket or a credit card pocket. And I am going to do both. I'll do one on one side, one on the other side. So what we wanna do is for these pieces, we're just going to fold them down so that they are right sides together. We're gonna to clip it in place. We're gonna do the same thing for both. Again, right sides together. And then for both, we are just going to stitch according to the seam allowance down the short sides and down the short sides, leaving this bottom edge unsewn. Okay, once that is done, we're just gonna turn it so that it is now right sides out. We're going to do the same thing to both pockets. Okay, once those are turned right side out, if you have non-fraying fabric or some sort of accent, we are now going to just attach this to the top of this pocket and we're gonna stitch it on. So what I'll do is I will add a piece of double-sided tape to both. And I have one for each here.
And then what I'll just do is I will lay this centered. And yes, I know my strip is longer. And that's because I plan to top stitch it. And then I will trim it at the end. Okay. Just going to add a couple clips to hold it in place. Do the same thing for this one. Now I'm going to take each pocket and I'm going to, right along this raw edge down here, I'm going to uh, stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge of this bottom raw edge. Okay, each pocket is top stitched, checking the back side to make sure it caught both sides. Now I'm just going to trim off the ends and any strings that I might have. Okay, and now we are ready to attach these to the lining panels. All right, so grabbing your two lining panels, we're going to lay them down right sides up, and then we're going to lay each pocket down. There is a measurement for how far down you want, let's see, how far down you want the pockets to be, and you want them to be centered. And then I'll just measure on each side. It's definitely not centered. Okay, if you have, if you're using a cotton woven fabric, you can go ahead and put a pin in these to hold them in place. But what we want to do now is take it to the sewing machine and stitch these on. So this is the slip pocket you're going to stitch along the three edges here, one, two, three, obviously leaving the top open to make your pocket. And then on this one, this is the card slots. Um, the pattern provides instructions for sewing it on this way and then splitting it down the middle. But I think for, for me, for this one, I'm going to just stitch again along these three sides so that I can have my cards go this way and slide in instead of having two tall ones this way. I'm just going to have one. Um, it'll be a little bit deeper pocket, but they'll be a little bit more secured and hidden inside. So I'm going to go ahead again and stitch all of these on. I might add rivets to each corner um, to help secure, and then I'll be back for the next step. All right, both pockets are stitched on. This will be my card slots over here, and then this will just be a little bit larger slip pocket. And I added the rivets to each corner just to help give a little extra support. Okay, now we are done with this for now. Let's set this to the side and move on to the zipper. All right, so to prep the zipper, I have my zipper pull already installed. And this is the open end or the rounded end of the zipper pull. As you can see, this side is flat. So on the rounded end, at that end of the zipper tape. We're going to separate it and then just fold these corners over to make a 90 degree angle. You can secure them in whichever way you prefer. I like using my trusty little Tim Holtz mini stapler. You can add a couple stitches. You could even use a lighter and singe the ends if you're using a polyester nylon webbing or um, zipper. Don't do it if you're doing cotton. <laughs> that would not be good. All right, so now that that is attached there, we are ready to attach it to our main exterior. Okay, so grabbing our 
exterior pieces. We have the front and we have the back. And what we want to do is I've already marked the line here. There is a measurement in the pattern for how far in from the left side on the front and how far in from the right side on the back. Because think about it with the bag being this way, once it's all together, you want these marks on the same side. So that's why one is coming in from the left and one's coming in from the right. Now what we want to do is starting at that mark, we are going to lay double-sided tape all the way to the edge. And I'm just gonna fold my sling tab down so I can do the same on this side, starting at that mark and then coming over to the left side. Okay, now I'm going to remove the tape from the front, remove the paper backing, I should say. And then taking my zipper, I'm going to flip it over so it is teeth side down. I'm going to line up the edge of my zipper with that mark and aligning the rest of the zipper with the top of the panel all the way to the edge. Now I'm going to take one of my lining panels so you can decide if you want your card slot on that side or the slip pocket on that side. Again, remember thinking if it's against your body this way, this panel is going to be here. So when you unzip it and look inside, this is the one that's going to be easier to see because it'll be here. The other one will be against your body. So I think I'm gonna have my card slots on this side. So what I'm going to do now is just align that again along the top there sandwiching the zipper in the middle. And I'm just clipping all the way across. Okay, so like that, your two panels are right sides together. Then we're gonna take it to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch all the way across according to the seam allowance in the pattern. Okay, that is stitched on. Now what we want to do is with the lining side, we're going to press it away from the zipper. And on the lining side only, we are going to top stitch along this edge. So leaving the outer out of it, leaving the outer out, <laughs> um, we're just going to top stitch along that lining side. Okay, so you can see that is top stitched very close to the fold right there. Now we are going to repeat the steps for the other side. So taking our other outer piece, we're going to remove the paper backing and then lining up the edge of the zipper tape with that mark. Again, lining up the zipper right along that top edge, all the way to the end. I'm going to add some clips. Okay, and then taking our remaining lining panel, lay it right sides together or right side down. Okay, and then we're going to repeat the same thing that we did just like on the other side. So we're going to stitch all the way across and then we're going to open it up, press this seam allowance towards the lining and then top stitch right along this lining edge on the lining only, keeping the outer out of it. Okay, now that we have both of the linings top stitched on, everything is together here. We're gonna flip it over to the front we're going to bring the outer pieces right sides together, lining up this bottom edge. And we're going to clip this in place straight across. Okay, taking it over to the machine, we are now going to top stitch according to the seam allowance along this straight edge only. Okay, that is 
top stitched. So what we want to do now is we want to separate our zipper. So if you have your zipper pull on, go ahead and take it off. If you didn't have a zipper pull on to begin with, uh, just go ahead and separate your zipper teeth. What we want to do here is we are going to butterfly open these seams. And I will just make a little side note here on yours. You should have this Decoville on this side as well. Um, I accidentally attached it to my lining side, so that's why there is no Decoville light over here, but yours should have it as well here and here for the Decoville light. <laughs> so in case you're wondering why it looks different, that's why. Okay, so pressing that open, then you're going to flip it over and top stitch down each side of that center seam. All right, that bottom seam is top stitched. Now what we want to do is lay the whole thing right sides together. So now if you look inside your, um, this is the exterior, 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 lining, lining. Lining up your side seams. Again, you want to try to line this up as close as you can. Just be real careful with, with um, those side seams because that's going to be visible from the outside of the bag. So if you, you can line those up, usually I like to line those up first and then I will clip down the side of the bag. And so we're only clipping on this one side for right now. Okay, and then same on this side. We're going to clip down. Okay, and then according to the pattern, we are going to stitch down from notch to notch on this straight edge according to the seam allowance. Okay, so here's what it's looking like. So this one side is sewn, this side is open. What you wanna do now is we're going to flip it so that the lining is now wrong sides together with the exterior. So it looks like this. So our exterior, is kind of folded up because that bottom seam was sewn. Our lining panels are like this. And what we want to do is we just want to reach in right here where this seam is. If we can butterfly open that seam and give it a little finger press, we just want it to hopefully stay open so that when we flip it over, a little clip there that's going to help reduce the bulk right there in that corner seam okay then you just want to push your linings down your lining and your exterior down away from the zipper tape and then we need to mark in a measurement about that on that side the measurement, the exact measurement is provided for in the pattern instructions. So we have a measurement here and here on either side, and we're going to top stitch between those two lines. Now, of course, um, you could mark it on this side, but this is the exterior side of the bag, and so that's the side I want up when I'm top stitching. So I'm just going to top stitch starting at this mark and all across, stopping at this mark. Okay, so here's what that is looking like now. Top stitched there to there. Now what we want to do is put our zipper pull on. This might be a different assembly method than what you're used to, but I think you're gonna like it at the end. Oops. It's a little tricky sometimes to get the zipper pull on, especially when you have, you know, your lining and exterior kind of pulling it apart. 
Okay, so I think I'm looking good here. You just want to make sure when you put your zipper pull back on that your tape is even across the bottom here. So you want this nice and smooth. And then I'm going to slide that to the middle. And then again, I'm going to turn the bag out so that, again, we will be linings together and exteriors together. And so you have this looking like this, and you have this tape sticking out, and you have your linings here. Okay, so to close up this side, what we want to do is we want to take our zipper tape and we are going to fold it in half. So we want the teeth side out and we're folding the zipper tape together. So teeth side out, teeth pushing towards the exterior panels. So there's my exterior, there's the teeth. And then I'm just clipping the tape sideways like this. And then I'm going to clip it in place down here to the lining side. And I'm going to do the same on the exterior. So lining up that side seam again. And then clipping down to this bottom corner. Okay, so what you wanna do now, this is where it might get a little bit tricky, but that's okay. Actually, I'm gonna flip it over this way. You're going to start stitching here at this corner, and then you're going to stitch down until you can just catch these zipper teeth. Right, so you just wanna catch them. Don't let your press, presser foot push this out of alignment. You wanna keep it even with the teeth facing this way. And then so you're just gonna stitch until you can catch this teeth, uh, tape I mean. And then you're going to remove it, flip it over, and do the same thing, stitching up as close as you can get here to the zipper teeth without going into the zipper teeth. So probably about right about where this clip is, you're gonna get as close as you can here. Okay, so again, teeth are this way, clipped in half. You're gonna stitch until you just can catch those zipper teeth. And then you're gonna flip it over and do the same thing, getting up as close as you can to the zipper teeth. Okay, so as you can see, I stitched up until I was very close to the zipper teeth on this side. And on this side, I stitched up, it might be easier to see on this side, just catching that zipper te tape and stopping right there before I got up to where the teeth are. Okay, so you can remove those. Now what we wanna do is we wanna close up the bottom, but we need to turn it through this opening. So I'm just going to clip it in place to hold it. We want to sew in about three quarters of an inch first, and then we're leaving this center open. So sew in about three quarters of an inch. Um, the next step after that is we're going to box the corners, um, but I'll be back to show you that part. All right, so that's our turning hole. Hopefully I left enough room <laughs> to get it out. This could be quite the workout when we get to it. So what we wanna do now is we just want to come over here to the side seam or to the, the corner. We want to match up those side seams as much as possible. You could press the seams one way or, or the other, or you could butterfly them open and press them. I think for this one, I'm just going to leave it. Um, I'm gonna have one seam going one way, one seam going the other way. And then on the other side, just making sure, you know, the seam is going this way. So this one I want going this way. That way it's gonna lay nicely when I get the bag turned through. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing to the outer. And this one is butterflied open, so I am going to try to butterfly open the side seam. 
There we go. All right, matching those seams up. Clip in place. And on this side, there we go. Clipping that in place. Okay, so now we have all four corners clipped. Now what you wanna do is you want to stitch across, straight across each corner according to the seam allowance provided in the pattern instructions. All right, all four corners are boxed. Now we get to turn it through. So this could be a little tricky for me because the pattern says just stick your hand in there and pull it through. Well, <laughs> I have rather large hands, I guess, because I can't get my hand in there and I don't want to force it and then get it stuck. Have you seen that commercial? I think it's, what is it, Pringles? Pringles? <laughs> Where the people get the, the can stuck on their hand. Yeah, I'll go around all day with a <laughs> inside out bag stuck on my hand. That would be great. All right, so we're just gonna work this through slowly and carefully. All right, we'll get just about there. Okay, so now we need to close up this hole in the lining, and then we will push this inside of the bag. So I'm just going to, let's see, get these corners pushed out as much as possible. Pull these bottom seams in. Okay, and then I'm going to top stitch as close to the edge as I can, straight across there, closing the hole. Okay, that is done. Now we need to push the lining into the inside of the bag. And again, this is going to be a little trickier for me because, you know, I accidentally put that Decoville on my <laughs> lining pieces instead of on the exterior. So I'm getting quite the hand workout today. So I don't know if you can see inside there, there's the one slip pocket on that side, the other slip pocket on that side. And I think it's pretty, pretty good there. I just wanna make sure that this is, side seam is flattened as much as possible. So kind of, that's how it's looking. Super cute, super tiny. <laughs> it's so cute. Um, so I'm using, dry, what is it, dry oil? It's from Merchant and Mills. I'll double check the name of it. It's dry oil canvas, I think. Um, so it does give that little bit of a wrinkled texture, almost like wax canvas, but, but not quite. So in use and stuff like that, like I can iron this and get these wrinkles out, but they will come back through use. Um, but man, that is super cute. Okay, so now the last thing that we need to do is to create the strap. All right, so taking one edge, one end, flat end of the strap, I'm going to loop it up and over that center adjuster bar. And I am going to attach two rivets here um, just to hold this in place. And so I wanna get as close as I can to that center bar with one of the rivets, and then the other one will just secure this end down here. 
All right, so there's the strap. Rivets are attached. Now we want to come over to the other side of the strap and we're going to loop it through this rectangle ring here at the top. Now we want to make sure that we are going the right way. <laughs> so I'm going to do this and then I'm going to check it to make sure that I am looping mine correctly. Okay, so as you can see, there's the strap there, and then your hardware is right side up. So if I were to, this is the outside of the bag, if I were to keep pulling, you can see right side up. If your hardware were upside down, or your strap was going the other way, then just pull it out and um, insert it in the other direction so that it will go the right way. Now what I'm going to do on the other side, we are almost done, is taking the lobster clasp, attaching it the same way. I'm going to add a couple clips here, and then, guys, we are just about done. All right, so the lobster clasp is attached. All we need to do now is connect it to, let me just make sure I'm not twisted here. There we go. Connect it to the D-ring. And there you go. There is the sander sling. Guys, it's so cute. It's so little. Like, I knew it would be the small size, but um, like you see how big my hands are, or maybe it's just uh, that I have really big hands. <laughs> That's gonna be a thing now. Hopefully not. Um, but yeah, here is the small size. Super cute. This would be great for if you just want to throw in a couple things. You can just keep it close to your body. You don't have to worry about it, um, you know, under a, a sweater or a jacket or something like that. You don't, you don't have to worry about it being too bulky. It is a great little size. And I really like how this turned out with using the strap webbing down here. I think that's a neat way to tie, all, tie it all in together. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for much, so much for um, watching the um, video tutorial and for supporting all of the makers and the designers in the Marathon Society sewing series. Make something fun and don't forget to watch the other makers in the series. And if you have any questions, um, just drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. All right, guys, have a great day.